Welcome to this patient audio guide about gout treatment options. This audio guide is produced by the Global Healthy Living Foundation and is sponsored by Horizon Therapeutics. Maybe you or someone you love suspects you could have gout or perhaps you've been recently diagnosed with gout. Or maybe you've had gout for a while but are concerned that it's getting worse. This audio guide can help you learn more about gout and how it affects your health so you can manage it better and, as importantly, start feeling better. Remember, this is not a substitute for professional medical care. Always talk to your doctor about issues concerning your health and medical condition. In our first couple of audio guides, we learned a lot about symptoms of gout, how gout is diagnosed, and risk factors for gout. Here, we're going to hear from experts about how gout is treated. If there's one thing to understand and take away from this audio guide, it's that you can't ignore your gout. Once you have one gout attack, chances are you will have more of them. Treating gout with the right medication can make a world of difference in how you feel today and in your long-term health by preventing complications. You'll remember from previous audio guides that gout attacks happen because you have high levels of uric acid in your body. Uric acid is a normal waste product, but when there's too much of it, it builds up in your joints, causing inflammation and a lot of sudden and severe pain. The key to gout treatment is getting uric acid levels under control. Here's an overview from Dr. Ted Fields, a rheumatologist and renowned gout expert at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City. The goal of gout treatment is, of course, to have you stop having flares. That's, that's number one. And to prevent joint damage and to prevent you from developing these tophi, these lumps of uric acid in the skin. So that's our goal, is to improve your quality of life and to make you better. To do that, the goal is to get your uric acid into the right level, which is below six. In really severe cases, people with tophi, the bumps, we have to get them below five. But in general, the goal is to get you below six. That's our aim in managing gout. Once someone gets diagnosed with gout, there's two problems. The first is what needs to be done for the flare. It needs to be decided what is the safest and most appropriate medicine to knock out the flare. And then the second question is gonna be, what do they need to do for prevention? Everybody needs to be thinking about diet and if appropriate, considering their weight. Uh, but a large group of people also need to be thinking about whether now or in the future, they need to be on some medication that might help to lower the uric acid and prevent future flares. So we've established that treating gout is a two-pronged approach. Taking certain medications to treat gout flares in the short term to reduce pain, and taking other types of medication to prevent flares from reoccurring. Let's start by looking at how gout flares are treated. When we're treating an acute flare of gout, someone who comes in, let's say, with a hot red toe, we have a certain number of options, and we need to pick the one that's most likely to work and least likely to cause harm in an individual person. So what are our options? One option is a drug called colchicine, and some people will get better just on that. Uh, that's one of the medications that works by blocking the ability of the crystals to cause inflammation. So that's one option. Another is, it's called a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. That would be like naproxen um, or uh, celecoxib, pro uh, naproxen or Aleve, uh, medications that have an anti-inflammatory effect. They also stop the crystals from being able to cause inflammation. And for some people, those are very effective. Those drugs have to be used a little carefully in someone who has high blood pressure or kidney problems, since those drugs can affect that, or someone who has an ulcer, those medications might activate the ulcer. So we need to know the person's history so that we can decide who's, which drugs are safest uh, in their case. Uh, another option that we have is anti-inflammatory steroid, like prednisone or methylprednisolone or trade name Medrol, um, that medication can also be very effective in knocking out a gout flare. It has some potential problems. If somebody was a diabetic, 
the medicate the steroid medications might raise their blood sugar so we'd have to anticipate that and be ready to do something about that if it happens for someone who has side effects uh, from any of the other options or medical problems that make the other options difficult a local injection might be the safest thing to do local concentrated steroid injected in the toe or the ankle or the knee wherever someone was having a flare can often knock that out in people who none of those drugs are appropriate or no, not are tolerated, uh, there is another option that's available called anakinra that you inject under the skin, but we generally only need to use that in those people where all the other options are either not tolerated or inappropriate for some other reason or just not effective. So to summarize, there are a handful of medications that can be used to treat pain and inflammation during gout flares. But an entirely different set of treatments is used to prevent gout flares in the first place. These medications work differently. The main thing they do is help lower levels of uric acid in the body. Once we've decided that an individual person with gout <clears throat> needs more for prevention than just watching their diet and their weight, we have certain options. The classical option is allopurinol. Allopurinol is a medication that decreases the production of uric acid in the liver and therefore lowers it in the blood. You start it and you basically stay on it indefinitely. The dose needs to be adjusted to get the uric acid below six. There is another option called Fabuzostat, trade name Euloric, uh, that can be used in people where allopurinol is not appropriate or not tolerated. Another option for long-term uh, prevention of gout is using probenicid, which is a medication that increases the amount of uric acid that comes out in the urine. And by doing that, um, allows the uric acid in the blood to get lower. The other medication uh, that's used for prevention is colchicine. Colchicine does not lower the uric acid level but it decreases the ability of the crystals to cause inflammation. That's why we often use colchicine during the first six months that we're treating somebody with allopurinol, because we know that as you start allopurinol and it lowers the uric acid in the blood, it starts to pull the crystals out of the joint. As the crystals are coming from the joint lining and coming out into the joint fluid, as they're about to be gotten rid of from the body, they can cause a gout flare. Your white cells can come in contact with those crystals, cause an inflammation, and you get gout flares. So you can actually have more gout flares after you start allopurinol than you had before. That's where colchicine comes in. There is one other option that we have for preventing gout flares, and this is for people who allopurinol and for that, uh, if those are just not sufficient or for whatever reason, are not effective in, in that particular person, then you can use this drug called peglodicase, which is an intravenous drug that's extremely potent in lowering the uric acid. It basically breaks down the uric acid in your body and temporarily brings the uric acid to an undetectable level. So it brings it dramatically down, which is really nice in people with very severe gout. So that's an option that we have available uh, in people with the standard treatments of gout are just not working out right. So to recap, there are a handful of medications that can be taken regularly to keep uric acid levels low and prevent gout flares from happening. It's important to remember that gout flares are not normal or healthy. If you keep having gout flares every few months, that means your gout is not well controlled and you and your doctor should reevaluate your treatment plan. For more on this, let's hear from Dr. Payam Shakuri, a leading kidney doctor. Gout is common in people with kidney disease, so Dr. Shakuri sees a lot of patients with chronic gout. Patients and physicians alike, they think it is normal to get flares while you're on a uric acid lowering medication. It is not. And it is very important to understand and re-educate ourselves about this point. It is not normal to get flares and joint pain while you're on uric acid lowering medications. If you are on these medications and you're still getting flares, you still have joint pain, you still have fatigue, weakness, lack of energy, that means your gout is uncontrolled and we need to move on to better, 
more aggressive treatments. In recent gout treatment guidelines from the American College of Rheumatology, they talk about something called treat to target. This means that you and your doctor should be working to get your uric acid levels to a certain number or target. This is usually below six, or in some cases, even lower. Your doctor may suggest adjusting your medications until you get to the right target. It's important to recognize that not treating gout or under-treating gout can lead to serious consequences and complications. Here's what Dr. Fields has to say about this. If someone with gout is not treated or they're undertreated, meaning that they are managed, but their uric acid level is not brought to the goal of less than six, there are real consequences. First of all, they can often have lots of flares of gout. If you're not managing the uric acid level, people can continue to have flares. Secondly, they can develop joint damage over time. Having a high uric acid in a patient with gout can lead to joint damage over years. Third, they can develop TOFI, the lumps of bumps that can happen on the foot or on the tip of the elbow, and those can develop over time. Uh, people with gout that are not treated may develop kidney stones. There's some evidence that inflammation in your system may contribute to hardening of the arteries um, and therefore to heart disease. So there are multiple things which can happen to people who have either not treated their gout or undertreated their gout uh, that could have been avoided with more aggressive management. Before we wrap up, let's talk for a moment about the importance of staying on your medications and following your doctor's orders for taking them. People with gout are very bad at taking their medication. This has been studied in the United States and internationally, and the compliance rate with gout is one of the worst and there's been a number of studies trying to figure out why that's true. Uh, one of them is the cyclical nature of gout, where people get flares and then they get better. And as we, if gout was something where you felt bad all the time, you'd probably be more likely to stay with your medicine. But if you get these periods of time when you feel good, you can stand back and say, my gout's doing great. I don't need this medicine. And I've certainly seen people do that. So that's part of the nature of gout. Also, gout tends to travel with a lot of other illnesses like high blood pressure and diabetes, and people are often on a lot of medicines and they're looking to get rid of one of their medicines. And one of them that they'll often stop is their medication for gout. So the message is that staying with your medicine with gout is really important. Fortunately, our gout medicines are reasonably safe. Uh, they don't interact with a lot of other medicines. There are occasional things the doctor needs to watch for, but in general, they're well tolerated. They're medicines that you can stay on for the long term. And it's really important for people to be educated about why they need to do this. If people really understood how important it was to keep the uric acid down in that goal range of less than six, they would appreciate that they really need to stay on their medicine. Because if they stop the medicine, the uric acid comes right back up and they start getting the complications of gout again. We threw a lot of information at you in this audio guide. The most important thing to remember is that gout is a serious condition, and it often requires taking different medications to keep symptoms under control and to prevent long-term complications. If you have any questions about your treatment, your uric acid levels, or how well-controlled or not your gout is, talk to your doctor. You and your doctor should work together to develop the right treatment plan for you, which should eliminate gout flares and have you feeling healthy again. We'd like to thank Dr. Fields and Dr. Shikori for sharing all of this information about gout treatment options. If you haven't heard our previous gout audio guides, check out the episodes about gout symptoms and risk factors. For more information about what it's like to live with gout, check out the Gout Show podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts or at www.thegoutshow.com. And for more information about managing gout and to join a free worldwide support and advocacy community of gout patients and their families, visit creakyjoints.org.
which is part of the nonprofit Global Healthy Living Foundation. 